We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T, and I hope everybody's doing good today. Make sure you guys have your teacups ready. Get ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get Hell ready. Yeah. Because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you guys are doing good. I've been really busy this week. I've been doing a lot of freelance work. Like I told y'all, honey, I keep several hustles. So that's what I've been busy doing, but I've been keeping an eye on this whole Monique thing. And I know a lot of y'all were hitting me up on Twitter like, did you hear about the latest Monique scandal? And um, shout out to uh, Thick Chick 86 Thank you for just having my back through just all the bullshit drama that's been going on. Um, I appreciate it. And she was one of the ones who sent me this updated story on Monique. So if you guys do not know, there's more information coming out on Monique. Somebody at Netflix is basically blasting her. And the industry on Blast talked about this. And also entertainment journalist John Murray he did a live stream the other night, and when I tell you Abe and their mama was there, he went in on Monique, and he basically put out the facts. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the post that the industry on Blast posted on social media on their Instagram page. Check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. All right, so you guys just saw what the industry on Blast had to say. And basically what they're saying in so many words is that Monique allowed her ego to once again, you know, affect her coins. Basically, Netflix was telling her that she had a chance to get a $3 million payday, but that she would need to audition. And at that point, Monique got offended and was like, well, does Dave Chappelle have to audition? Does Kevin Hart have to audition? I'm a legend. I'm an Oscar winner. And they were like, well, not necessarily because they're constantly working. They're constantly, you know, Know, selling out arenas we can buy a ticket to Dave Chappelle's show right now and go see him but we can't buy a ticket to any of your shows we'd like for you to audition and at that point you know you can get a potential three million uh, Monique refused so they said well fine if you don't want to audition then we'll just give you 500,000 and at that point that's when she bought in Amy Schumer and went on this whole tirade so after that Netflix was like you know what fuck it like you came to us you asked us and being that you can't you know abide by our terms of services and what we're asking of you then you know go elsewhere but like I said John Murray um, ended up breaking this down I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys the clip of John Murray talking about the whole Netflix situation check this out I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary a boycott of Netflix there's too many jobs over there and I will probably work off to the cause so it makes it hard for you to differentiate between addressing her and addressing the cause so when uh, Wanda Sykes who was on the Tom Jordan morning show today and she said, I'm not advocating for a boycott of Netflix. There's too many jobs over there, and I will probably work with them again. When she tweeted Monique, she wasn't tweeting Monique to say, I stand with you in boycott. She was tweeting Monique to say, Netflix offered me a low offer too, but I went somewhere else. Move on. Now, then you have Jada Pinkett Smith put out a statement and say, you might not like Monique or her tactics, but the way that she says things, but the reality is that she has a good point. Monique doesn't have a good point. Time's Up had a good point. And they've been all over the news. They've been all over the war show. The reason why people were wearing all black to the Golden Globes. The reason why people are wearing white flowers to the Grammys. The reason why this whole movement is going forward and women are asking for what they deserve and getting what they deserve is because this movement has been in place. Monique is the leech who jumps onto the legit legitimate movement so that she can try to justify her irrelevant cause. Well, what do you mean irrelevant cause, John? What if she felt like she was more uh, worth more than the five hundred thousand dollars? What if you? Here's the thing: the stories, are, more details are coming out about this Netflix thing now. And the reality is that apparently Monique was offered three million dollars to come in and showcase for the network executives, so that they could make sure she was worth the three million dollars for her comedy special. She was offended that they asked her to come in and showcase, and so she decided, uh, I don't want to do that. So they said, well, if you don't want to come in and showcase for the comedy executives, well, then cool. Uh, we'll give you a half a million dollar flat offer. 
Now, when she cut that video, standing against the wall looking like she was in a dungeon somewhere, like someone was holding her hostage and asking us to rally behind her and boycott because of the disinjustice that happened to the Rosa Parks of Hollywood, um, she didn't share with the fact that she was offered $3 million and her ego wouldn't let her go in there and meet with the people. And oh, by the way, uh, for anybody, and I don't understand why you would, but for anybody who says, well, Monique is as good or as talented or whatever as Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, and Amy Schumer, one word separates Monique from all of these people. Chris Rock, arena. Dave Chappelle, arena. Amy Schumer, arena. All three of them are currently selling out arenas. Monique played a comedy club in New York last weekend. A comedy club in New York. I probably should have went online and pulled the... All right, so you guys just saw what John Murray had to say. And John Murray was not pulling no punches. The reason why he's going at Monique is because, you know, he had told Monique that you were not the most decorated Whoopi Goldberg is. She has an EGOT award. She's won tons of awards. You know, Monique, you know, you're a, a legend in your own right, but you're not like the most decorated. And so at that point, Monique got offended. They went back and forth. And this is why John Murray was going in and bringing facts. You know, I've been watching this whole situation play out with Monique and the whole situation has just left a bad taste in my mouth concerning her. You know, what bothers me with this situation is that Monique is claiming to be for black people and she's fighting for black folks and she's fighting for pay inequality which we all know exists, okay? It exists in Hollywood and also exists in our regular everyday world, okay? But for someone who's claiming to look out for black people, what I've noticed with Monique's disposition when I watched her on the Sway show, when I watched her podcast with her and her husband, when he broke down crying and just all the extra stuff that I'm seeing on their show, she seems to only be comfortable blasting other black people. She went in on Cheryl Underwood. She blasted her. She went in on Steve Harvey because she felt like they didn't have her back. Will Packard said nothing about her and she blasted Will Packard. She went off on John Murray. I mean, even yesterday she got into it on Twitter with Roland Martin and her and Roland Martin had always somewhat been cool. She's been on his show before. Roland Martin had given her a platform to come on his show before and speak her stance. And she came for Roland on Twitter. Y'all can go ahead and check this out. All right, so you guys just saw her coming at Roland Martin. And then let's not forget the big blow up where she just literally blasted Oprah, Tyler, and Lee Daniel. And we all know they have a lot of power in Hollywood. You know, but the one person I'm noticing that she's not really blasting and going in on is Amy Schumer. You know, she keeps coddling Amy Schumer and saying, you know, my sister Amy and my sister Amy deserves whatever she gets. Like, why don't you have that same energy for Amy Schumer? Do y'all know... I went to go look up some Amy Schumer jokes because I've always found her to be unfunny. And I said, well, maybe I'm tripping because this bitch is selling out damn Madison Square Garden twice. She's doing world tours that unsold out. Maybe there's something wrong with my motherfucking ears. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm bugging. Let me go ahead and listen to her shit and see if maybe, maybe her stuff is funny. Maybe I just didn't give Amy Schumer a chance. Do y'all know when you go to YouTube and you type in Amy Schumer... Before you can even finish typing in her last name, it comes up comes up Amy Schumer steals jokes, Amy Schumer steals joke compilations, Amy Schumer steals joke compilation, Amy Schumer steals joke from Ellen, Amy Schumer steals jokes from Patrice O'Neill. I mean, 
It is insane how many jokes this woman has stolen, but I don't see Monique going in on her and saying she don't deserve that money because half the jokes that she's regurgitating, she done took that from somebody else. You know, it's, it's like she's tiptoeing around the whole Amy Schumer situation, but has no problem being loud and, and bold against other black people. Now, another thing that's bothered me with this whole situation is how people online are sitting here trying to shame other black people. You know, a lot of these pro-black, you know, I'm woke folks are the main ones going around social media calling other people coons, bed wenches, going off on folks for not canceling their Netflix. Um, you know, I had somebody even come at me and I'm not going to say he was disrespectful, but he was like, I'm giving you the side eye. You know, I thought you was better than this. I can't believe you're not cutting off your Netflix. And like I told him, I don't give a damn. You're not going to shame me and neither is Monique. You can look at me cross-eyed. I'm not cutting off my Netflix for nobody. I'm a grown woman. I pay my own bills and Monique don't dictate shit in my house and neither do you. Okay? So if you want to call me a coon and all that stupid shit, but behind Monique, that's fine. But what I find funny is that y'all same people who are so quick to talk shit about Netflix, nine times out of ten don't even have Netflix. So let's keep that real. But a lot of y'all who are talking mess don't realize how much Netflix and Amazon have given indie filmmakers and black filmmakers, black directors, a chance to showcase their work and have paid them well, okay? If y'all don't know, Netflix recently signed a deal with Shonda Rhimes, okay? Supposedly the deal was for $100 million to bring Shonda Rhimes from ABC to a streaming service. Do you realize how much that deal is literally a threat in Hollywood? Right now, it's shaking up the industry in Hollywood. Netflix is making moves. Shonda Rhimes is a black woman. What else pissed me off with this whole situation with Monique is that I saw many people trying to undermine Mary J. Blige's Oscar nomination. Okay, a lot of folks are saying, oh, Netflix, uh, they're only throwing Mary a bone because they know that Monique done put them on blast. How silly do y'all sound? Do y'all research before y'all say stuff? These nominations were in way before Monique went on her damn rant. Do y'all realize that that movie Mudbound was directed by a black female director and she co-wrote it? Do y'all realize that people behind the scenes were black people who put that movie together? And on top of that, there's so many movies that we would not get a chance to see, so many documentaries that we would not get a chance to ever witness if it was not for Netflix. Netflix has literally paved the way for so many black actors, directors, producers to showcase their work. So we should just boycott them. So fuck the black folks who are trying to make it in the industry, who need that platform. We should just boycott Netflix so that way no black people get paid, no black people have a platform all behind Monique. Does that make sense to you pro-black people? Does that make sense to y'all so-called pro-blacks? That we should affect the incomes of all the black folks on Netflix for one black person, okay? We have shows, movies, and documentaries on Netflix like The Crew, The Get Down, What Happened to Simone, Yelling at the Sky, 13, so many more things on Netflix that were produced, the cast, the crew, the behind the scenes people were black. So all of them should be out of work because Monique feels like she should get more than what Netflix feels like she deserves. You know, I find this whole situation just crazy and I find it just really insulting. You know what I'm saying? Monique has the right as a person to feel like she should get whatever she should get, okay? She feels like she's an Oscar winner. She should get, you know, $20 because that's what she told Sway. She should get $20 million. She has a right to do that. But there's a thing called business, okay? And there's a thing called if we put $20 million into you, will we recoup that back? A lot of y'all are not supporting Monique. Let's keep it real. A lot of y'all are not checking for her comedy. You can see that by all the comments online. So if a lot of y'all are not checking for her comedy in the real world, what gives them the confidence to put $20 million behind Monique when they're not going to get that back? It's a business at the end of the day. If you believe so much in your comedy and you believe so much in the people and the people will come out and watch, then how about Monique and Sydney put that money up and then let's see if they recoup that back. A lot of folks are not really willing to juggle with their own money and finances. But when it comes to somebody else's money, folks want to dictate what other folks should do with their money. And I find that just, just really comical. Now, let me also break this down. Let's keep this all the way 100. Because one thing that always bothers me is that whenever you attach a celebrity to something, all of a sudden there's more supposed validity to it. I know people right now in 2018 who have master's degrees who went to college for four or five years, they got their masters, you know what I'm saying? 
real smart people, went to school for business and just all types of other things. These people should be getting paid a minimum. I say a minimum of $25 an hour. I have friends who have master's degrees who are working customer service jobs, who are working collections jobs. They're lucky if they can even make 15 bucks an hour due to them not only being black, but also due to them being female, okay? So we have a lot of everyday people out here who are literally in college debt, who have master's degrees. Some folks even have bachelor's, honey, and they're making under 20 bucks an hour. Do you realize that these degrees that people hold nowadays does not guarantee them the same amount of pay that they were guaranteed 20 years ago. 20 years ago, when you had a master's, you were guaranteed to have a certain level of income. In 2018, that's not the case. Now, let's keep it all the way 100. Y'all can sit there and clown folks and call them coons and bed wenches and, and do whatever, but you have to keep it 100% in your heart. If this was a regular person, if a regular person took to the news media, took to social media, and said, I want everybody right now to boycott Google, to boycott anything that Google owns, because I am an IT person and I work at the Google offices in San Francisco, and I feel like with my degree, all the time I put into my degree, all the learning I did, you know what I'm saying? I feel like per my IT degree, I should be making 75 bucks an hour. Google done told me they can only offer me 30 bucks an hour right now. And then I have to work my way up. I think that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? All the time I done put into school, my effort, everything else. I didn't, you know, go to school for the past five years to be getting paid 30. I demand that y'all boycott Google. OK, until they pay me 75 bucks an hour. Let that marinate. How many of y'all would legit boycott Google? Something that y'all seriously probably use every day to do searches and to look things up. How many of y'all would boycott Google for some for one lowly IT worker at the Google company? I would say 99.999% of y'all would tell that person to have a tall glass to shut the fuck up and be lucky that they have a job and be lucky that they even have a job making 30 because nine times out of 10, you're not even making 30 bucks an hour. You're lucky if you're making 15. So how dare you sit up there on your pedestal? At least you're making 30. I'm only making 10 bucks an hour. You better be lucky you got that $30 an hour job. You need to be quiet. Nobody would fight for a regular person to get paid 75 bucks an hour who was already making 30, which is already more than the average person makes out here on the streets, okay? But somehow I'm supposed to get in my feelings and get upset because somebody who's already rich, who um, turned down 500,000, which is more than most people will ever see in their life at one time. She turned that down, but somehow I'm supposed to feel bad for her. So I should basically, you know, stop what I enjoy watching. Something I probably tune into several times a day. The documentaries I enjoy. You know what I'm saying? I love Luke Cage. I love Dear White People. So I should just stop watching everything on Netflix. Not support Netflix. You know, cut it off. Fuck the other black people who are getting paid off of Netflix. Fuck the other black actors and actresses on Netflix. Fuck the other black producers, directors, and writers on these Netflix shows. Fuck them and their families and, and how they eat. Because one black woman, Monique, did not get what she feels she deserves, which is $20 million. Honey, like I told y'all in my first video, if you want to boycott Netflix, do you. I'm not knocking nobody for boycott Netflix. You do what you feel is right in your heart. But how dare you sit there and call other black people coons and shame other black people for not cutting off their Netflix. I mean, that's that's silly. And like I said, to me, she tries to put on this pro-black stance and she's for the people. But let's keep it real. Monique is for herself. Monique is looking to make more money for herself. And there's nothing wrong with that. But she needs to stand on that conviction. She don't need black America riling behind her to get millions and millions of dollars. Is that money, if they was to give her $20 million right now, is that somehow about to help me and my family out, your family? Is that somehow going to trickle back into the black community? That's what I'm wondering. But like I said, it's so funny that she's out here blasting and picking fights with other black people in the industry, but she's scared to speak on something as simple as Amy Schumer stealing jokes, Amy Schumer being unfunny, you know what I'm saying? And, and Amy Schumer basically having white privilege. That's why she's selling out the way she's selling out. That's why folks are looking out for her the way they're looking out for her. You know what I'm saying? Monique won't speak on that, but she has no problem constantly throwing her own people under the bus when she's in the mood. 
you know, I wish her the best, but just the way the moves that she's been making this week, the things that she's been saying on her podcast, I can't rock with that. Like she's trying to make this whole thing about the people and it's not about the people. It's about one person because if she was really caring about the people, she would have just moved on and went elsewhere. And like I said, if you're really concerned about the people and you're really so-called pro-black, how do you feel about other people losing their work and their livelihood if everybody was just to boycott? Let's say everybody just, you know, unsubscribe from Netflix right now. Black, white, just the whole country just said, you know what? We stand behind Monique. We're all going to unsubscribe from Netflix. So that makes you sleep better at night that so many people will be out of work. So many people won't be getting their income. So many people won't be able to feed their families all behind Monique. Is that what being pro-black is? Affecting other black people who have nothing to do with Monique's negotiations? And then I love how she tried to throw Tiffany Haddish in there. Like, you know, I'm taking a stand so that way Tiffany Haddish can get paid. Uh-uh, Tiffany Haddish, the difference between Monique and Tiffany is that Tiffany is very relevant, okay? Every time I turn on television, I keep seeing her Groupon commercial. Tiffany Haddish is making her money. She's getting her coins, In this day and age, it's about relevance, point blank, period. And if folks don't see you, if folks don't hear from you, if folks don't know what you're up to, they're not checking for you. Even when you go on her Instagram page, I'm not seeing no comedy. When I go on Michael Blackson's, he's always cracking jokes and keeping himself relevant. Gary Owens, the same thing. All these other comedians, even if they're not out here getting like, you know, major work and selling out arenas, they're keeping themselves relevant in the comedy game because they're doing comedy on Instagram. They're cracking jokes. They're doing skits. They're keeping themselves out there for the younger generation. When I go to Monique's Instagram page, all I'm seeing is workout videos. It's like, are you even still doing comedy? You're not promoting. All I'm seeing is workout videos. It's just her trying to get skinnier and lose weight. Nothing wrong with that. I commend her. You know what I'm saying? Get healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. What I'm saying is that she's making herself not relevant to this next generation. A lot of these kids, these younger kids, they're not checking for Monique. But they can tell you who Michael Blackson is. They can tell you who Gary Owens is. And they've been around since when I was a kid. So in closing, I'd like to say that I still love Monique. I still have a lot of love for Monique. I will always love the work that she's put in in the industry. But one thing about me, I refuse to just sit here and go off of emotions. I'm not jumping on these celebrity bandwagons. Y'all can have that. I'm done with that. I'm not jumping on every bandwagon that a celebrity puts out there. Because unlike a lot of y'all, I actually fact check. I do my research. And I bring facts. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people eating off of Netflix. There's a lot of black folks being able to eat, being able to be creative, being able to get their vision out there because of platforms like Netflix, Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon. And I love anything that disrupts the industry because the industry is so damn corrupt. So when I see a streaming service like Netflix making big moves, I'm going to get behind that because when Hollywood told a lot of these black producers and directors and writers that their stuff wasn't good enough, Netflix gave them a chance. So I'm not going to disregard that all behind Monique. And then the fact that she was dishonest when she first came out about what happened. And now the truth is coming out about how she was offered $3 million. But because her ego, you know what I'm saying? Because her ego felt like she was just as good as Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock and that she shouldn't have to audition. That's when she blew the $3 million deal. So then Netflix in return offered her $500,000. So the fact that she wasn't all the way truthful with her audience from Jump definitely makes me look at this whole situation in a different light. You know what I'm saying? If you can be dishonest about that, I can't stand behind that. You know what I'm saying? So that makes me a coon, a bed wench, whatever these slave names that y'all want to call black people who don't jump on these emotional tirades with some of y'all. Whatever names you want to call me on social media, that's fine. I'll be everything but a child of God. I'm everything but a child of God to half of y'all any dang on way. And at this point in time, I just don't care anymore what people think of me. If y'all want to call me these names because I have common sense, I'm going to use logic and I can bring you facts, then that's fine. I'll be that. You know what I'm saying? But I wish Monique and Sydney the best, but Monique needs to realize that nobody here owes you anything. That's one thing I learned a long time ago, and that's something I'm trying to basically retain in this day and age, that nobody owes you anything. If people support you, that's great. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. But at the end of the day, don't nobody owe you shit, okay? Like I've always said... I will always stand behind the plight of regular folks before I get behind the plight of celebrities because there's always a bunch of mess behind the scenes. There's just there's there's just too much fuckery when it comes to like celebrity plights. A lot of it ends up being disingenuous. A lot of it ends up being self-serving. When we start speaking um, publicly about regular folks and their pay inequality, 
then I'll take it seriously. I'll save my tears and my opinion and my pity and my empathy for people like that, for people who are in student loan debt, who went to school with the promise of once you have this degree, you'll be guaranteed, you know, good income to take care of your family. And half the people I know with these degrees are working jobs that they did not even go to school for. Let's keep that all the way in 100. If we're going to talk about this pay inequality, let's start with the regular everyday man and woman. You know what I'm saying? Who went to school, who are in thousands and thousands of dollars of debt, and they're not even able to get a job in their field. I know how long it took me to get an IT job, okay? It took me almost four years before I finally landed an IT job. So miss me with this whole thing about pay inequality for people who are making more money than the average person on the street. Does it suck that she's not getting as much money as Amy Schumer? Yes, it does suck. But we also understand that there's certain privileges. We also understand that, you know, when it comes to other races of people, they just get paid less. So by this logic, should we just boycott everything because it's not fair? I mean, the way some of y'all talk, we might as well not even leave the house. We might as well never go to work. You know what I'm saying? The way some of y'all talk, y'all are not logical outside of the internet. All these online revolutions sound good, but guess what? They only sound good online. You know what I mean? Y'all want to boycott stores. Y'all want to boycott this. Y'all want to boycott, you know, Netflix. Y'all want to boycott everything. So by this logic, we might as well not do anything. We might as well never leave the house and go clocking on the white man's clock. We might as well never go grocery shopping at the white man's store. We might as well never watch the white man's TV because he owns everything, including BET. So we might as well just stay in our homes and never do anything, not enjoy anything, not go anywhere, and just be depressed 24-7 about this system of white supremacy that we're living in. I think that's what some of y'all want, but I'm a realistic person. I'm not about to be in my house depressed, sad all day about the injustices that we face. We have to find ways to deal with it, you know what I'm saying, have open dialogue about it. But let's keep it real. All these so-called online revolutionaries, all these Facebook armchair revolutionaries, they just sound good online. In the real world, they're watching the white man's TV shows because I don't care if you do boycott Netflix the cable company is owned by the white man direct TV is owned by the white man so by that logic boycott everything don't watch anything on television by that logic why even come on YouTube this is owned by white people too so I mean do you understand why I just can't take these online revolutions seriously like I said honey you can look at me cross-eyed give me the side eye I don't give a shit I'm waiting for season two and three of all my favorite shows okay thank you so let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that like button and make sure you click that bell so you can be down with the notification squad, honey. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.